Mental health is something we don't often prioritize with ourselves, especially as pet parents or dog moms or whatever you prefer to call yourself. And what I have found in my life specifically is how important it really is to take care of my mental health so I can be the best person and present to be the best pet parent I can to my dog and my cats. So today's guest is Caroline May, and she is the founder of Dog Mom Mentality. So Caroline's platforms focus on motivating and empowering other dog owners to build their confidence in relationship with their dog through training, play, mental health advocacy, and exploring. Caroline believes that by changing your mindset and developing tools for your emotional well-being in one area of your life, because who doesn't want to be the best for their dogs, that the skills, habits, and thought patterns will trickle over into other areas, positively affecting your life as a whole. I couldn't agree more. So today we're talking to Caroline and we're finding out just how she got to this point where she is helping other pet parents around the world with their mental health. And we're going to learn a little bit about her dog, Layla, and her dog, Layla's reactivity, which is pretty triggering for some of us. So make sure to pay it, especially, especially if you have a reactive dog. But even if you don't, there are so many tips in today's episode for just how important learning, how important it is to care for our mental health as pet parents really, really is, and how it affects our pets as well. She also has a very special offer for you, which I am thrilled with. I didn't know prior (laughs) to recording with her. So I will put all of that in the show notes as well. So make sure to stay to the end find out what that offer is because I know I'm taking a wrap on it. With that, let's get into today's episode with Caroline May. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Caroline, um, can you, I guess, just tell us a little bit about you how you've gotten where you are and what dog mom mentality is like really all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I, well, you know, thank you for having me on. Um, If anybody is, is new, I'm Caroline. I am the creator business person, I guess, but I don't, (laughs) would not, (laughs) I would not really consider myself a business person. So I guess really creator of, um, the the brand dog mom mentality and i got to that by having um my dog layla so she is a three-year-old australian shepherd mix um and for a period of time i really was struggling myself while she was struggling with her reactivity and some behavioral issues um and so while she was kind of struggling with that, I had never seen anything like that before. So it was all just very overwhelming and caused me to have, um, some really horrible anxiety. Um, and then once we actually got into training, um, and I started to, to work with her, I realized so many things about myself. Um, my perfectionist, perfectionistic ways came out. Um, I definitely like was having a really hard time setting boundaries with her and then with other people as well. So, you know, I saw some people pleasing tendencies come out um, and it really just showed like a lot of a lot of things about me. It made me really aware. Um, But another thing is that I realized that I didn't know how to manage a lot of my emotions. Um, So up until this point, I really was able to kind of mask whatever I was going through. But with her, it was like, she catapulted me into this like really, really 
low place, really, really low anxiety um, or high anxiety, really, really low place. Um, and it was, it was really hard for me to, to overcome some of that. And I wasn't being very truthful with myself or with others around me about how much I was actually going through. And so whenever I did start talking about more mental health and emotional um, related topics uh, pertaining to dog ownership, so kind of talking about mental health or emotions through the lens of dog ownership, it really started to make sense for me, make sense for a lot of other people. And I, I started getting into a lot of these like mental health and taboo topics um, th through the lens of dog ownership. And that's how I came to dog mom mentality. So she, I like to say that she was kind of my invitation into this like healing, mental health, growth, personal development um, process for me. And it kind of really opened up a lot of places that uh, I, I became aware of a lot of things that I needed to work on and I just never expected a dog to show me all of these things. Um, so mental health and like emotional intelligence has all, always been something I'm really, really passionate about. So being able to kind of bridge that gap and talk about it in a very relatable way made a lot of sense for me, a lot of sense for other people. And that is kind of how dog mom mentality was born. Awesome. I really like how you, being a dog trainer <laughs> mm -hmm. myself, like how Layla's reactivity really sent you in this like journey of, oh my gosh, like I'm just as bad off mentally as my dog. <laughs> Like, yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, oh, sometimes I think I'm more reactive than her. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's super interesting. And I really appreciate how much your dog, not just, I mean, obviously she kind of opened up this window into yourself that you hadn't really looked through before, but mm -hmm. she also like has helped you through it because Right. You've had to work with her at the same time you're working on yourself. Right. And so many things that people talk about in dog training, especially when it's related to reactive dogs or dogs with behavioral issues, you know, you talk a lot about um, setting boundaries and thresholds and um, trigger stacking and kind of all of those things I started to, to think about on myself as well. And it really made sense to me. Um, and I, I love talking about those, I guess, like psychology topics, like in both, both people and dogs or people and animals. And, um, I think it's a really cool way to work on them while working on yourself. Like you said. Yeah. So, You've kind of turned this into really, I mean, a business, but helping other people as well. So mm -hmm. how does that work? How are, how are you and Layla helping other people? Yeah. So uh, beyond social media, like on uh, Instagram and TikTok, where Instagram is probably like kind of where I started everything. So I consider it more of my like main account where you'll see me show up. But um creating like relatable and informational topic on there um, and really just kind of getting out the like vulnerable pieces of being a dog owner. And I've seen so many people open up because of that or providing um, tips or products or recommendations on, you know, how to cope, how to um, like prepare yourself for like an anxious an anxious event with your dog, you know, whether it be going to the vet or trying out a new agility class, um, or any, anything like that. Um, so yeah, coping mechanisms, mindfulness practices that you can use, um, just different ways to, to think or talk about mental health, um, and your emotions and processing them. Um, beyond that, I also have my own podcast, which we talk about any way that your dog has emotionally affected you. Um, so it really started off with talking to other reactive dog owners to kind of just show people the behind the scenes of what we go through and, you know, talk about the emotional side of it and the like owner's 
perspective of everything. And then it kind of branched out into any way that your dog has emotionally affected you. So we, I've talked to people about how their dogs have inspired their careers and, uh, from therapy dog teams and service dog teams and, um, people, you know, I just, I just had someone on who talked about how they're an introvert, but their dog is, is an extrovert. They're very, very social. And so their dog has kind of helped them branch out of their, their cocoon and and branch out of their shell a little bit. Um, so just talking about all different ways that your dog has emotionally affected you, but it's a really good place to go. Um, for if you are struggling particularly with a reactive dog, just to hear other stories and how they've kind of worked through it can be so inspiring and motivating. Um, but then the, the biggest thing that I've done to help other dog owners is I created a journal, a guided journal called Growing and Healing. And it is specifically for, for the dog owner. So it's not a tracker per se. It's literally a guided journal for for dog owners based on um, 10 common emotions that that dog owners face, like um, feeling frustrated, feeling anxious, feeling misunderstood, feeling guilty, um, unmotivated, uh, joyful, motivated, grateful, um, brave, um, vulnerable. So all of these kind of like just huge breadth of emotions that dog owners face or dog owners go through, um, you know, through, through multiple different instances, you know, whether it's your reactive dog, your, um, aging dog, because I know a lot of people start to have these really big feelings whenever their dog gets to like the senior age. Um, it could, it could go along with puppy blues. It could go along with, um, getting ready for, for a big sport trial. You know, I have a a lot of friends that do dog sports, specifically agility with their dog. And I know that they have said, like, I get really, really anxious before, um, we go to these big events and like, rightfully so I, I totally get it. So, um, it really covers like just any kind of emotion that you may go through as a dog owner. And it's, uh, each emotion has five to six different guided prompts to kind of work you through and help you process that emotion. Um, so, you know, for some of the, the good emotions, like joyful, brave, um, grateful, it's all about like reminiscing on the moment, um, appreciating, taking it in, soaking it all up. But then like for frustrated or anxious, it can help you, um, with your mindset, with your confidence, um, kind of gaining that energy back. But really the whole point is learning how to manage and process your emotions in a healthy way, basically. Um, because so much, uh, if you hold those emotions in, you, yourself become reactive, uh, to your dog. Like I've definitely had, have had those moments multiple, multiple of times. And even if she, she doesn't do anything wrong, you know, I might have a really bad day at work and then she accidentally trips me. And then all of a sudden I'm reactive towards her. And, you know, sometimes that's like not the best way to deal with things. So, you know, I, I had a moment the other day where, um, I, I thought that she was going to run to her dad because that's what she always does. Right. And so I dropped her leash about 10 feet away and she ran to her dad. But then afterwards she saw a squirrel and chased after the squirrel. And so for that, I felt really guilty. I felt awful. I felt horrible. Um, but it was like, I didn't see the squirrel. She always just runs to her dad and loves on him and everything. So like, I felt awful that that was out of my control and it's something that I like didn't see. So I, I did go to the journal and I did work through all of that um, and kind of saw it from a different perspective, um, if that makes sense. So the journal um, is broken down into four different sections. So, so the actual journaling part, which I just described, um, that can help you process and manage your emotions a little bit better. Um, but then there is an intention setting section, a goal section for, for six months, and then a wins tracker in the back to just look back on whenever, um, maybe you're having a bad day, maybe you're having a good day, but you're able to see all the things that you have accomplished, um, with your dog, big and small, which can be a huge mood booster. Yeah, that's awesome. And so for my longtime listeners, you will probably remember 
It's been a while, but I did a an episode on dog reactivity, and one of the things that I I asked you to do was to pause, and every time you want to say that my dog is reactive, instead you say my dog is having a trauma response, right? And yes. just feel in your body how different you feel from saying those two phrases, mm-hmm. and. I think that your journal kind of helps people do that with themselves, give themselves some grace mm-hmm. in what they're feeling and what they're going through. Does that that sound about right? <laughs> oh, yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And um, I, it's funny because like I consider myself a reactive human now knowing how people label reactive dogs and all it is is a label, right? Um, yeah. And it's something to tell people so that they can understand it a little bit more easily how your dog may behave. Um, And I've, I've known people who really don't like the label reactive dog. You know, maybe they prefer just fearful. Maybe they, they prefer um, dog, uh, dog selective. Um, So there's a, a lot of different ways for people to kind of describe that behavior. But I love how you said, um, like my dog is having a trauma response because actually the the first time that she ever did have like a reaction that's that is how I felt with her. I I had no idea that dog reactivity was a thing. I had never heard the phrase before. And for me if you would have said that I would have thought aggression. Um but actually what happened was th- this was way before we started training I just had I had no idea what was going on and we had saw a skateboard and my dog had become extremely scared of skateboards at some point um one of those things that you don't know if something happened and she got scared of it or if she just came out of the womb scared but anyway <laughs> she's used to be very 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 scared of skateboards and um a skateboard rolled by us. I don't even know if we saw it. We might have honestly just heard it, like heard the wheels. And she got so scared that she started to run in the opposite direction. And she was on a harness, but at the same time, she was pulling so hard that I felt like she was having an anxiety attack. And this was my first time that I felt really, really connected to her because prior to this, I just was a very like average, I wouldn't even say average, I would say below average dog owner, honestly. Like I just didn't have that connection with her at all. And she was actually supposed to be more of my husband's responsibility. But at this time I I had saw that and I was like, I feel like she's having like a panic attack or an anxiety attack. Like the way that I could just tell, like she just wanted to flee the scene so bad and like was shaking and running away. And I just remember, remember thinking like, I have felt that way before. Like I, I still get emotional about it because I was like, I have felt that way before. I, even though I don't really like this dog at the time, I was like, I would never wish this feeling upon anyone. And now that I'm seeing my dog go through it, like this really, really sucks. Um, and so ever since, like, I, I always remember that. And am so easily to compare it to my own feelings and my own experience with that kind of trauma response. Yeah, I think that I appreciate that story so much because I think you might be the first person I've ever heard who like just that was their immediate reaction was that my Mm -hmm. dog is it has, has is experiencing trauma. Mm-hmm. Most people that I talk to that I deal with get really frustrated and angry and they're just like, why is my dog misbehaving so badly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they just don't now, understand I, it. Right. Now, like I will say like, as time, time went on, there were definitely times that I was like really embarrassed by it um, or, or frustrated by it, especially if we had gotten to a point that like we had a few days where we didn't have any kind of um, reactions towards the skateboard. And then one day it's back again, you know, we regress. And at those times it is, it is very, very frustrating, um, especially as someone who likes control 
and likes to to be able to control the situation and environment, it's like, according to my past data, this shouldn't have happened. Um, but there's so many things that we we as humans can't even consider because we don't smell all the smells in the air and we don't hear all the things that they can hear. Um, and so learning about like trigger stacking for me was very, very helpful because it, it reminded me that there's things that I can't even take into consideration just because I literally cannot smell them, see them, et cetera, like she can. Yeah, for sure. So this journal is kind of, as you said, a product of your journey with Layla mm -hmm. and it has, these are the same techniques that you have used to not only help yourself, but to help Layla mm -hmm. by helping yourself. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I know is a kind of an odd way of, of phrasing it, but it's the truth. Like the better mm -hmm. we are, the better we feel, the better, you know, the more confident we are and just, you know, feeling good in our own body, like the better we can be pet parents and we can show up for our dogs, especially when they need help like Layla mm -hmm. did. And probably, I mean, having worked with a still lot of dies reactive dogs, yeah. still does. <laughs> yeah, still does sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like, it's a never ending thing. Like it certainly can get better, but we're always kind of on high alert. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I, I love that so much. I don't think I've seen another journal like it, specific, you know, like geared towards dog mom or, you know, dog parents mm -hmm. specifically. And I think that's where it's just so unique. And so, um, I don't know, just, it, it fits so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The there's community. a lot of, there's a lot of like training trackers, planners, but this mm -hmm. is, um, very much a journal like for for the human's emotions um and it has like a lot of references to dogs in it and it talks about like when you may feel these emotions because of your dog um but it's very much centered on on the human's emotion side of it that's awesome so i know you mentioned your podcast and how you're just you know you're talking to other pet parents and whether it's reactivity based or just how, you know, pets have helped people in, in general. Um, so what are some of the, if people go in, it's, it's called dog mom mentality as mm -hmm. well. Awesome. So if people go and search for your podcast, what are some of the like key episodes you would love for them to hone in on? Oh yeah, for sure. So I have, kind of broken it down into, I think like five or six different categories. Um, one of them being uh, inspiration for dog owners or inspiration for um, reactive dog owners. But really by listening to those episodes, I think you can get some kind of inspiration or motivation from it. Um, and then uh, how dogs have inspired careers. So I did a whole series on that, which was really, really fun to, to talk to everyone about. Um, and then let's see. Uh, so like service and therapy dog work um, is a big one. And then specifically mental health issues where we dive into more um, like mental health topics like depression as a dog owner, um, sexuality as a dog owner. Um, let me think of some of the other ones. Um, race as a dog owner. Um where you live and how that can affect your dog. Um, I'm planning to do a whole series on that, which I'm really excited to kind of compare the lives of people like in the city and the mountains um, and the coast, each, each one. So I think that's going to be a really fun one. Um, and then just solo episodes where I, I dive deep into our journey. I dive in deep into how I'm currently feeling at the time. Um, I have a, a an episode that is really loved about boundaries called boundaries are cool. Um, and that's an episode that I think a lot of people can relate to just how, um, Layla with her, I, I realized I have a lot of people pleasing tendencies and I hated to put that like structure and those boundaries on her at first. Um, and, and prior to us really getting into training, she, it was kind of just a free for all. She could kind of just do whatever she wanted to. Um, but we saw some behavioral issues come out of that. And so, um, 
I talk about, you know, learning to set boundaries with her and gaining confidence in that way. Even if it's just like as little as, no, you have to stay on your place or like you need to come, come when called kind of thing. Um, setting boundaries on like, you know, she can't jump up on the table. She can't jump up on people, whatever. Um, so like learning to set those kinds of things with her gave me confidence to, set other boundaries in my life with like real, real life people, um, and set boundaries with my time and my energy. And so that's like a, a really cool conversation that got started, um, initially on the podcast. And yeah, we, we really dive into a bunch of, of different issues. Um, but like I said, anything, how, any way that your dog has emotionally affected you, um, can be can be talked about on the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a, a few, I think like two or three, um, reactivity, uh, reactivity episodes, reactivity centered episodes that, that are really popular. One is called, um, how dogs humble us or how our dogs humble us. Um, and then another one is called, um, how, my reactive dog start in my personal development or some, something like that. I know it's, I know it says, um, spark sparked my personal development or something like that. And those are both guest episodes. Um, and then the, the solo boundaries are cool episode is, is a really popular one. And then I had, um, two come out later this past, um, this past year that have been very well received and very popular. One is all about, uh, navigating jealousy as a dog owner. Um, so talking about how you may be jealous of, of other people's uh, like dogs, you know, they may have it easy when we may think we have it hard. Um, or like being able to, to talk to somebody and like, say like, I'm kind of jealous that, that you are able to do this with your dog. And, you know, maybe it like, by talking to them, you get a little bit more clarity and you're not as jealous. Um, and then talking about coping strategies for that jealous feeling. Um, and then another one is, uh, me and a, a friend had just a very open conversation about our anxiety. Um, and we did go into dogs, uh, a little bit, but I would say the majority of the conversation was all about just kind of comparing our anxiety because we both had it from, uh, a younger age. And that was a very, uh, a popular podcast episode. I bet anxiety is, is tough. Cause I think so many people just don't know, and I'm not excluding myself, like the best ways to deal with it. And I mm -hmm. don't think it's, there isn't a one size fits all answer. And right. that's why it's so complex and why it's so difficult for so many people. And I know like, for me, when I get really anxious, I get really grumpy mm -hmm. and then like the whole energy in the house changes and my dog right. is super affected by that. Like, right, right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So managing, managing your emotions, you know, and, and we have the, we have data, we have, you know, scientific information telling us that when we're stressed, our pets are stressed and that right. decrease that can, that negatively impacts their mm -hmm. quality of life. Also possibly quantity of life. So, you know, there's, there's so much involved with our emotional health mm -hmm. that we often don't think about how it affects our pets right. health. Right. And it absolutely does. <laughs> yeah, for for sure. I I felt for, felt like for a really long time, um, maybe a year and a half ago, that we were kind of in like a feedback loop, um, to where you know, I, like she would do something, I would get frustrated. She would pick up on that frustrated energy from me. She would be on edge. Like something would happen, I would get frustrated, and it was just like this constant feedback loop, um. And I would finally notice it and then be like, well, how the heck do I get out of it though? Like, <laughs> like I, I need to do something about this. Um, and that is one of the things that really triggered this like deep dive into like, how can I help myself to help my dog 
kind of thing, kind of that, that whole mentality of helping myself to help my dog. Um, yeah. Cause I really started to see that, that feedback loop. Yeah. Well, such an important topic. And I'm so glad that you put this journal together, put it out in the world and you put all the positive vibes and energy out in the world through social media as well. So where can people find the journal? Where can they find you on social media so they can go ahead and start following you? Yeah. So, um, everything is dog mom mentality on social media. That's the podcast. And then you can find the journal on, uh, dog mom mentality.com. And there's a hardbound version of it. There is a spiral version of it. Um, and then there is an ebook version of it. So you can get it in whatever kind of version. Um, suits your fancy. And uh, mm-hmm. I'd love to, to offer you and your, your listeners a discount code for, for the website. You, uh, so you can get 10% off with the code, um, P P R one zero. So that that'll give you a little bit of a discount on, on the website for the journal. Awesome. Thank you. And I love all the different variations because I have recently been into spiral bound Mm -hmm. or when I'm writing physically writing, but also like on my iPad, I want a, I want a PDF that I can download into good (laughs) notes. Yeah. I I use good notes too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like I, I love having both of those available. Mm -hmm. So it's going to suit everyone's needs. Yes. Um, So Caroline, thank you so much for joining us today. I just love what you're doing and love how you're helping people feel better so their pets can feel better. And uh, if you have any parting words, I normally end with give your pets some extra love from both of us. Yes. So I I will say um, (laughs) if you can play with your dog today. I love that. Do you know? Let me show you this. I actually have a t-shirt that I made that says play with your dog, but I also have this sticker. Oh, I love it. Play with your dog. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's like awesome. Like one of my big things is like people don't play with their dogs enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's awesome. great. I echo that sentiment. Give your pet some extra love and play with your dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to talk to you next week. And thank you again, Caroline, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the furry family coach. Just go to the furry and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's the furry family and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.